Good morning, church. It's Thursday morning. Take your Bibles and go to Acts chapter number two. We're going to be looking at the coming of the Holy Spirit. This is probably one of the most misunderstood chapters, and people get off into strange doctrines uh, from this chapter. But if you will look and see what it actually says, and then, then compare it to other instances in the New Testament where you have the mention of speaking in tongues and so forth, you'll find that this is not an ecstatic type of experience that everybody was just uh, speaking in a language no one knew. It is actually the undoing of the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel, God confused the languages. They were all speaking one language, and all of a sudden, they began to all speak, and some of the people could understand some, they couldn't understand the rest. And there were just multitudes of languages out there, and people were looking at one another saying, what in the world is that guy saying? And they couldn't understand. This is the reverse of that. As you look at the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, you see that God gives a sign of what is happening by allowing people to hear in their own language. As Peter preached, and possibly in, in, he preached in Hebrew, we don't really know, but whatever it was, every person, no matter what language was their native language, they were able to hear and to understand. So what we find in chapter number two of the book of Acts is what God promised in the Old Testament that he would pour out his spirit upon his sons and daughters. Now, the Holy Spirit has always been active. Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2 says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And verse number two, it says, and the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. And so God's Holy Spirit had been ministering throughout the Old Testament. But there was a promise that there was coming a time when the Holy Spirit would come to indwell individuals and stay and, and be a permanent aspect of their lives. And that had, uh, in the Old Testament, happened in, in some sense when men would be filled with the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit might not stay with them. Uh, with Samson, he did not know that the Spirit of God had left him, uh, that, that he had lost God's Spirit, he had lost his salvation, but he had lost that anointing. But there was coming a time, according to John the Baptist, when the Holy Spirit would be poured out on people. Jesus said, you go wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He promised to send the helper. So all these things were prophesied. Now, the one thing that we need to, to keep in mind, and I think this to be fascinating as you read through your Bible, you just find so many things that are knitted together to show you that God had these things all planned out is that Jesus died on Passover, was buried on the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He was raised from the dead on the Feast of First Fruits. All those happened in the spring within a short period of time, within a week of, of each other, within a full week, all three of those take place. But from 50 days after First Fruits, when Jesus rose again, there comes a feast called Pentecost. And it's interesting that in Pentecost, they would celebrate the coming of the law. All the feast had something to do with God's deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt. Uh, the Passover, obviously, we understand, uh, was the slaying of a lamb and plant, putting the blood on the doorpost, and the death angel would pass over. It spoke of redemption. The unleavened bread spoke of sanctification. First fruits mean that they were born again into a new life. They were going to be set free and so forth. All those things were celebrated in those first three. But when you come to the fourth feast, it is called the Feast of Pentecost. The Jews believed that that was the day God spoke and gave to the Hebrews the Ten Commandments. He spoke on the mountain. The people quaked and trembled, and, and God gave them Ten Commandments. And then Moses went up on the mountain, and God wrote those Ten Commandments on some tablets and so forth. But it commemorated the giving of the law. Now, most of us know this, that when the law came down off the mountain, 3,000 men were found in rebellion that would not repent, and 3,000 died. You can read that story for yourself in the book of Exodus. But when Pentecost happened on uh, this occasion that we're about to read, 3,000 are going to be saved. So the law kills. It shows us that we are uh, unable to keep God's requirements and God's statutes, God's commands. And therefore, the penalty is death. So the law kills. It lets us know that we're not acceptable to God. 
but it is the Spirit that gives life. That's right out of 2 Corinthians. And so here we see that there's going to be a time when God pours out His Holy Spirit. Now, note the act, and we won't get far into this today, but we'll look at it more tomorrow. But notice the act is one of people understanding, not of people being confused about language. Look at verse number 1, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. There were 120 of them in the upper room, one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And by the way, the wind is always a picture. The word for wind, breath, and spirit are, are, are the same. And so when he's using the wind, uh, the, the Holy Spirit's like the wind. You cannot see the wind, but you can feel the wind. You can hear the wind, and you can see the results of what the wind does. And so it's liking it here. Heaven sent this spirit, the, the Holy Spirit. It was like the wind that came through, and you knew it was there. You could see evidence of it there. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appealed to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them. That is, they seemed to see a fire, uh, and God always, not always, many times has represented himself in fire. You find him as a fire in the Old Testament. At night, he was a fire, pillar of fire, and during the day, a pillar of cloud, burning bush, and so forth. And it just seemed like that flames came out and touched each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this was the Holy Spirit giving them ability to speak. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem uh, Jews, people who had come for this feast of Pentecost, devout men from every nation under heaven. So God caused this to happen when one of those great feasts were going on and people were coming because the Bible teaches them that every male has to come in the spring for the three feasts in the spring, in the fall for the three feasts in the fall, but also at Pentecost, every male has to be there. And so they're all there from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard their, them speak in their own language. Now, it's not that there was the Holy Spirit caused the confusion. They were just confused. How in the world is he speaking and we're hearing it in our language? And everybody. So he's speaking one language and everybody is hearing what he's saying. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, look, are these not who speak Galileans? They speak Aramaic there. And how is it that we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya adjoining uh, serene visitors were there from Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretan, Arabs. We hear them all speaking in their own language the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What could this mean? Others mocked, saying, They are full of new wine. So some didn't get saved, some didn't know what was going on as they as these in the upper room began to speak. They were then able to go out into the community. They left the upper room doing exactly what Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit and go preach. Preach starting in Jerusalem. So they immediately received the Holy Spirit. They went outside the upper room. They were out in the community and they began to speak. And people are saying, these are Galileans and we're hearing them plainly share some things. And they were amazed uh, at what was going on. This was God's manifestation. And this, I believe, at least in my understanding, is the beginning of the church age. The Holy Spirit's dissension, descending upon the believers, indwelling the believers, and that church age will end when God removes His Holy Spirit at the rapture and every individual who is born again, filled with the Spirit of God, is going to be removed with the Holy Spirit in what we call the rapture. Well, we'll look to more, more tomorrow about uh, the results of what happens as God pours out His Spirit upon His people, upon His church. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for the Holy Spirit that gives us strength and power to be able to fulfill the divine calling of being Your witnesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.